15th of July, 2013. Across Australia, this is a special edition of Sunrise with Koshi and Sam at Brecky Central and Mel. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Brett. Let's get some weather now for this Monday. Good morning, Edwina. How are you? Well, good morning, team. <laughs> All aboard. This morning, we are riding trams. And while that sound is a daily occurrence for all of our, uh, our viewers in Melbourne and Adelaide, for Sydney, where we are today at the Sydney Tramway Museum, it's kind of a part of history. This tram is actually from 19... 04 used to do the King Street to Watson's Bay route and they have 80 of these trams from right across Australia and the world as well including the tram capital San Francisco so we'll be going for a bit of a, a trip down memory lane aboard these trams this morning you might remember Koshi I think they got rid of trams in 1961 in Sydney oh, you were living in Adelaide back then perhaps yes thank you what about in 1905 and I was tiny I was I was barely out of nappies small like two two or three years old Anyway, <laughs> Move on. perhaps we should go to the weather. Now's a good time. Sunrise weather brought to you by Beacon Light. Sunny and 33. Did you know Melbourne, in fact, has the largest urban tram network anywhere in the world? But when Sydney Sorry. had their network, it was twice the size. I'm too afraid to go back to Koshi after making that joke about no, his age. You're perhaps fine. we should go to Mel over in London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Time for a check of your weather right now. Let's go down to Edwina at the Tram Museum, Eddie. That's right, Brett. We're at the City Tramway Museum this morning. And if you catch public transport to work or to school and you feel a bit trapped and squeezed in with all those other passengers, spare a thought for the passengers of this tram. This used to be the tram that took prisoners from Long Bay Jail in Sydney to the courts in Darlinghurst. It was actually from this cell in 1946 that renowned bank robber Darcy Dugan actually escaped. He cut through the wire there with a butter knife and, and got out the back. There he is in there now. He's back. A bit freaky, actually, <laughs> when we passed uh, a little earlier. Well, this is like Glenn um, Rowan. Uh, 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 the Jerry G's about him. <laughs> a bit rough. Look, yeah, and then he went back to prison and escaped again. He came to be known as the Houdini of the New South Wales uh, prison system, a renowned uh, bank robber. But that's just some of the history we're experiencing here at the Tramway Museum. There are around 1,500 trams in Sydney at its peak, compared to around 750 in Melbourne now. Very interesting. You know, let's take a look at your weather. Two for Darwin, fine tomorrow and Wednesday, partly cloudy on Thursday. This is the oldest tram they have here from 1896. But trams are in fact making a comeback. I'm told that the Gold Coast are actually installing a whole new network that will be ready by the end of the year. Mm. Just in time for the Commonwealth Games. Yep. yep. There you go. Uh, sounds mm -hmm. good. I don't know about the security if um, if old mate was getting out with a bread and butter knife. It probably mm. wasn't yeah. that, that mm. difficult to escape. I think that's why yeah. that one was phased out. Yes. yes. <laughs> probably well not done. the best idea, Long Bay Jail. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up on Sunrise. Nice work. Thank you, Barretts. Uh, let's get some weather now. Eddie, is take us back in time today. That's right, Sam. Look, there's something about trams, trains, planes, any kind of transport really that really fascinates kids, isn't it? They're always pointing up at the sky or pointing out the window. And they can come here to the Tramway Museum and get an experience for what life used to be like in Sydney way back when trams existed here, although they still have them in Melbourne and Adelaide. And David is one of the 250 volunteers who keeps the Tramway Museum going. How does it work? How do you run one of these things, David? Well, the first thing you'll notice, there's no steering wheel. So all we have to do is use the brake and make it go faster. And that's still the same now? There's no steering wheel, exactly you just use the, the tracks same. to guide them? Yeah, we use the tracks to guide us where we're going. And all the volunteers, the what's their fascination with trams and trains? Some of them work uh, on the trains? Most of them work on the railways or have some connection, from family connection back to the old days of uh, the tramways. It's basically just a giant shed for, uh, for people to play in. Let's take a look at your weather. Sunrise weather. And even though this train dates back to 1936, David, That's it's going to let me have a ride. Why do I always think these things are going to go badly? Oh, wow. See you in half an hour. Whoa, okay. that goes quite fast. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eddie, thank you. It's coming out to 12. All right, let's check out your weather right now with Edwina, who is enjoying all the fun of trams. Oh, Barrett's there, of course, 
still trams in Adelaide and Melbourne, but there used to be trams like this in every capital city and places like Geelong as well, in Frio, Rockhampton, Newcastle, Launceston, all over the place. It used to be the conductor's job to jump off and change the direction of the track. I'm told this is, again, fairly easy to do. And then, so instead of going to the city, you could perhaps go to the beaches, jump on board, Scarfy, let's go for a ride. Cost a, used to cost a penny, a little bit uh, more expensive to catch public transport now. Oh, we can't fit in the door. <laughs> Let's take a look at your weather. Oh, you're right. Two for Darwin. Scarfy did manage to get on board. I think they made people a little smaller in 1936, potentially. See you in half an hour. Thanks, Eddie. They probably didn't have to carry giant camera crews yeah. with them. No, they didn't allow that. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Eddie. Now, this week, our very... Uh, thank you, Brett. Let's get some weather now. Eddie is on the tram in Sydney. Don't be shocked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sam, you can imagine it, can't you? Back in the 1920s, this tram went all the way to the beaches in Glenelg for a, uh, a pie floater, Koshi. I won't ask you if you can imagine that, because I know <laughs> for a fact you're not that old. But how about this for a shed? Check this out. This is where they renovate and maintain all the trams here at the Tramway Museum. And down here, underneath the tram, we find Bill Parkinson, who is in charge of the shop here. Mm -hmm. Bill, you redo all the trams here and make sure that they're ready to run. What's the knack to uh, fixing a tram? <laughs> just being familiar with the equipment and it also helps if you've got a trade background. And a lot of the people who volunteer here in fact have a trade background, have worked on the trains or just have a love of trams from very early on. Yes, it's one of those things that gets in your blood. I know, I know of people that have been on the railways for years and the reason that they, they decided to stay there was because it was just a job to start with but it got into them and they Wonderful. became part of the system and uh, generated a love for trains and or rail vehicles. And 250 volunteers have kept this tramway museum running since the 1950s. It's a great slice of history. Let's take a look at your weather. Sunrise weather. Brought to you by Beacon Lighting's biggest and brightest stock take sale. Shop in store or online for incredible bargains store wide. The room sunny and 33. And these just aren't museum pieces as well. They're actually redoing this train, refurbishing it to go to Christchurch. So when the city rebuilds oh. a bit more, they'll take this tram over and put it back on the tracks. Okay. That's fabulous. Yeah. Alright, Eddie, thank you for that. Now, Melbourne University student Olivia Wood by 129 points at the SCG. Trams are just fascinating and Eddie has had the pleasure of spending the whole morning dabbling in trams. Oh, well, Barrett, look, it's normally a little bit early at this hour to be showing an undercarriage, but I think we can get away with it uh, today. Look, how fascinating this. This is the bottom of a 1936, is that right, Bill? 1936 trams that used to operate around Sydney. And what's fascinating about the Tramway Museum is they all still work. They still take them around the tracks on the weekends so you can come here and have a ride and learn a little bit about history. I don't know why I'm carrying this. I don't know what it does. I don't know uh, it's a cold, where I put it. So... Uh, it's a spanner. Thank you. You're it. Just yeah. checking. Oh, okay. Is it a spanner? Let's, she didn't let's say too sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a spanner. Sunrise weather. All right, David, one last go on the gong. Fire it off for us. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks very much for having us and to all the volunteers of the Sydney Tramway Museum. As I said, 250 volunteers that keep this place running. So come down and visit if you're in Sydney or if you're in Melbourne or LA, just go for a, a run on any old tram, any old day, really. <laughs> good point. I'll, I'll have to take my dad down there. He'd love that stuff. Yeah, it's very He'd good. Be all it? over it. That bell noise is terrifying. If you're ever crossing a road and you hear that bell, mm. you know, oh, no, run. I'm in trouble. <laughs> exactly. Now, we'll get to the cash calf in a minute, uh, but this... Yeah. <laughs> Pause up. Like had gastric um, banding, I think. Since last week.